When ChatGPT first came onto the market, it revolutionized the way we all did business, whether we realized it or not, because AI has always been in the mix, but ChatGPT was the first time AI really came widely accessible to pretty much the public. I want to tell you guys the truth, the cold hard truth. AI isn't going to replace you. Someone using AI will. All righty. In today's class, I'm going to teach you guys pretty much how to master ChatGPT without any tech experience necessary. So we're going to get right into it. So you guys may not, not know what this is, but back in what, 1849, Antonio Mucci created the first telephone operator, right? He didn't know what he was doing at the time, but what he did was he changed the way we communicated forever. Now we fast forward to 2023. How many of you guys have an iPhone now or a phone of some sorts, right? Uh, some, so, some sort of phone, right? The way we communicate as a species just changed completely, all because Antonio, back in the day, created a little invention that no one really knew what it was good for, and that evolved. And that's where we are right now with AI, right? AI, when ChatGPT first came onto the market, it revolutionized the way we all did business, whether we realized it or not, because AI has always been in the mix, but ChatGPT was the first time AI really came widely accessible to pretty much the public. And so from here, back in around January, I hopped on a, a podcast tour. And between January and March, I hopped on about a little over 100 podcasts. And from there, I met this guy named Jason. Now, Jason, he runs this mastermind called The Spear and Clover. And at that point in time, I never invested in a paid mastermind before. And so I was really on the fence about joining. I was like, oh, this is a lot of money. I'm not too sure if I'm gonna be able to you know, pay this off. What about next month? I'm not too sure. And in the mastermind, he had this one course. And in the course, he literally used ChatGPT to create the course. And he screen recorded himself doing the whole thing. And I'm like, damn, now this guy is good. At that point in time, this is when ChatGPT first came out. And I was just using it to create uh, show titles for my podcast and little show descriptions, nothing too fancy. And then from there, I ended up teaching a class on ChatGPT. I had about 300 or so realtors sign up from across the country and it went really amazing. And there were so many things that I did with that class. And now if you look up, there's a little graph. Now it looks super complicated. All you need to know is that it's called the diffusion of innovation. And it just shows how people adopt things in society. And the first little circle is the early adopters, right? Back in January, when I first taught that ChatGPT class, that's when all the early adopters were using ChatGPT. That's when everyone was the first getting started and really starting to utilize AI in their business. Now, early adopters always have the biggest advantage just because they get in the game before everyone else. Right now, we're getting into the majority, right? A lot more people know about AI. A lot more people are starting to hear about ChatGPT and all these other tools. And now, ChatGPT, just for a little bit of context, in five days, it reached a million users, which was the fastest thing in history up until Instagram threads that came out like two weeks ago. And that just broke the, the, the record out of the water. And now ChatGPT is on its way to approaching over 200 million users. And its website gets about 1.9 billion with a B monthly visits every single week or every single month. So ChatGPT is definitely something that a lot of people are using. But my biggest fear for all you guys is for you guys to end up in the last part of this group, the laggards. The laggards are the people that are still using the flip phones, the people that still don't have a computer, right? The people that just, for no matter what you do, they'll just never get with the times, right? That is my biggest fear because AI as we know it is going to change everything. And so the vehicle for you guys to start growing in the next 12 months is AI. And there's not a single person in here that I cannot, you know, 10X in the next 12 months with using the AI. So before we get started, I want you guys to repeat after me really quickly. Can you guys do that? Can you guys repeat after me? Yeah. All right. I commit that as soon as I know that artificial intelligence is the key to 10x my online presence, I will go all in. All right, good. So all you guys just gave me your word. And now I can get into the presentation a little bit. So a little bit about myself. My name is John Mendez. I'm the founder of Stop and Stare Media. And of course, it comes from the shirt, Stop and Stare. Just don't touch the hair. That's rule number one for all my curly folks. Um, ask about the story in the networking event. I'll tell you more about it, but I can't get into it right now. And um, pretty much, what is AI? That's the question that everyone is wondering. AI, it just stands for artificial intelligence. And 
I'm going to use a quick little metaphor. So think of a robot, right? A regular robot. It's kind of like a microwave, right? When you have a microwave, you put your food in, right? Click a couple buttons, boop, boop, boop. Press start, turns on, it heats up your food. And like most robots, you give it a set of instructions and it doesn't deviate from the instructions. It can never, ever deviate. So whatever you plan it, program it in the beginning, that's the only thing you can use it for. Now, us as business owners, we have to be smarter than that. We have to think better. We have to learn how to use these, you know, these skills and these uh, different technologies and program them in a way where they can actually make our lives easy, easier instead of trying to learn all these different tools. So the secret to using this is AI. And think of it like pretty much a chef. Let me ask you guys a quick question because most of you guys are Latino. So how many of you guys really know how to throw down in the kitchen? How many of you guys can cook? Okay, perfect. So think of AI like cooking, like you're in the kitchen, right? If you accidentally put a little bit of salt, you can recover and still make a good dish. And with AI, if you put in something, it'll use suggestions, recommendations, and other tools, you know, pretty much technology, to help enhance what you have going on versus a regular traditional robot. Whatever you put in is exactly what you're getting out. No ifs, ands, or buts around it. But with AI, it can learn about your business. It can learn about what your mission is. It can learn about your goals. And then from there, it can kind of craft responses based off exactly what you need. So I'm going to share with you guys secret number one. Now, normally I teach a longer presentation where I'll give you guys all three secrets. But for lack of time, we're just going to cover secret number one. And I'm going to help you guys transform ChatGPT into a Swiss army knife so that you guys could use it for everything. You guys already learned how to do that? Yeah. All right, perfect. So quick question. How many of you guys heard one of these AI doomsday headlines like, oh, AI is going to take over the world. The end of the world is coming. And ChatGPT is going to take over every single job in the industry. <laughs> right? As the media, they have a good job. They want you to feel scared, right? They want you to feel worried. And so I want to tell you guys the truth, the cold, hard truth. AI isn't going to replace you. Someone using AI will, right? If you remember anything from this presentation, if you remember anything from the panel that we're going to do right after this, AI isn't going to replace you. Someone using AI will. So I can't really get too much into tactics. So I'll inspire you on some of the ways I've been using ChatGPT and AI. So in this presentation right here, I use a site called Tome.app. Write that down. T-O-M-E dot app. Now what that does, it, it pretty much create presentation, presentations for you in a matter of seconds. You put in a topic and it'll create a presentation. And then from there, I use ChatGPT to put in all the information on the slides, right? I use DAL E, D A L L dash E, and that created all the images in the presentations. And it's already built into Tome.app, right? From there, the sign in that I use on Eventbrite, of course, Tome.app, right? And this slide doesn't really have any information, so it's not too important. But um, for Eventbrite, I use Midjourney to create that image on the landing page. I use ChatGPT to create the title for the event. I use ChatGPT to create the description for the event, right? I use ChatGPT to come up with the reminder emails for the event, as well as the registration emails to get people to sign up to the event, right? You can use ChatGPT for virtually everything, right? Whether it's a listing description, a video script, a Facebook ad, you want to plan out a book, you want to get into a diet, whatever you need ChatGPT for, you can use it for all these different things and a lot more, right? There are so many different use cases to using ChatGPT. I like to think of it like bowling. If you ever go bowling for the first time and you don't have the railings up, you're always going to end up in a side some way, shape, or form. And that's why most people don't use ChatGPT because you're kind of just thrown into the wolves and just have all these different use cases. And it's like, oh my goodness, what do I use it for, right? So... You can use it for pretty much everything. And people now are starting to sell um, these pretty much courses, programs, and they'll sell you like, here's the top 1,000 chat GPT prompts. They'll pay you like, charge you like 20 bucks or something like that. And what you don't know is that they're using chat GPT to generate all these prompts. Like, you think they're actually going to go through and use 1,000 different prompts themselves? No, they're using AI to create stuff and then charge people for it because most people don't know how to use chat GPT. Right? They think they're doing you a service, but I'm actually going to teach you the game. I'm going to teach you guys what's called 
reverse prompt engineering, right? Super technical term. All you got to do is think about it like this, right? Think of it like a teacher. Instead of me going to do the homework on my own and figuring out what the answers to the problem are, I can just ask the teacher, hey, teacher, how do I do this? And have the teacher tell me. So here's how you pretty much put that into ChatGPT language. We're going to use ChatGPT against itself. We're going to ask ChatGPT to help you create prompts. We're going to ask ChatGPT to help you do whatever you need. That way you don't have to learn what questions to ask. You don't have to learn what to type in. You don't have to learn how to use it. You're using ChatGPT against ChatGPT. And who knows ChatGPT better than itself? Nobody, right? Man, that's a good response, Sabian. He said me. And so um, step number one of how to really start getting good at ChatGPT. Before you start any conversations, whenever you log into ChatGPT, you go to openai.com. That is the main like ChatGPT website. They created ChatGPT. And then you go on to try ChatGPT, create a free account. Once you log in, right, before you start typing anything into ChatGPT, what do you want? Like, what's your reason for even logging on? Like, what do you want to get out of it? Do you want to create a video script? Do you want to create a presentation for first-time home buyers? Do you want to create a five myths for first-time home buying lending programs? Like, what do you want to do with ChatGPT when you log in? Right. Once you start getting an idea for what that's down, you want to tell that to ChatGPT. Now, it's funny because Tony Peck is another one of the speakers and he's called the godfather of AI. I mean, the godfather of Instagram. And I pretty much found this, this one prompt and it's called the godfather prompt. Now, it's a super long prompt, so I'm actually going to give it away at the end of the presentation. But pretty much what the godfather prompt is, it's a prompt that you use to pretty much turn chat GPT against itself. And in the prompt, once you guys start using it, you'll see it says something along the lines of, hey, ChatGPT, you are now a prompt creator. You will ask me questions based off of what I need and go back and forth for me to create a revised prompt. And pretty much, let's say I copy and paste the Godfather prompt, right? Then from there, I'll start giving it context. Like, hey, I want to create a 30 second video script on how to use AI in your business for um, people in the credit repair space. And then from there, ChatGPT will create a revised version of that prompt. It'll give you suggestions and then it'll give you a list of questions for you to answer. Now you'll answer those questions. You'll go back and forth with ChatGPT. And then at the end of it, when you're finished, it'll create a beautifully crafted prompt catered to your exact needs, all because you use ChatGPT against itself. And then from there, once you're finished, you pretty much just take out that prompt and you could use that for virtually anything. Now, because I don't have a computer, I can't show you guys this live, but I'm sure Carnell can vouch for me. I taught him how to do this as well. You pretty much, you go on ChatGPT, use this, what I call the Godfather prompt, and you can create a prompt for all your needs, regardless of what it is. And so this works for anyone, right? Whether you're an agent, a lender, a broker, credit repair, entrepreneur, uh, insurance, attorney, Whatever business you're in, this prompt literally works for everyone. It's bulletproof. And so here's how I started using ChatGPT. So this is my YouTube video. I have the entire video script, except for maybe one or two lines where I kind of freestyle off the cuff a little bit, created with ChatGPT. I have the titles for my YouTube videos created with ChatGPT. I have the descriptions as well, all that have SEO keywords pretty much meshed throughout the entire description, all created with ChatGPT, right? This is my podcast, right? We just hit episode 118, if I'm not mistaken, this morning. So I've been doing it for quite some time now. The titles now are all created with ChatGPT, right? The descriptions all created with ChatGPT. This is my 100th podcast episode event. So for all you guys that do client appreciation events, or like to do little get togethers or happy hours, I created the landing page for this all with AI. I created the plans, I pretty much asked ChatGPT to give me ideas, act as if, as, if, as if it's my event coordinator and help me plan this entire event. We ended up getting close to 50 people in person for this event. And my guy, Christian, who's somewhere here taking videos, made an amazing video for this as well. And the entire event, was playing with ChatGPT. So now you're probably thinking, John, but I don't have a YouTube channel. I, I don't do what you do, right? John, I don't have a podcast. 
John, I, I don't do in-person events. Like, how is this going to work for me and my business right now? With the Godfather prompt, how you use it is for whatever your, your needs are, you copy and paste a prompt. And if I had a computer, I would show you how easy it was, but you literally copy and paste a prompt. And for whatever your needs, whether it's admin tasks, whether it's a high level campaign, whether it's emails, whether you wanna write a blog post, where you wanna get a newsletter going, you can use this one prompt to create prompts for everything. That's pretty much all for the presentation. Remember, AI won't replace you. Someone using AI will. And if you want the free course that I have for bringing up ChatGPT and how to use it, um, everyone scan this QR code right now. If you want the pretty much the prompt list that I was talking about, in this free course, I have almost like 15 video lessons, including live Q&A, of my workshop that I did last month that had over 350 people sign up for. And this course is going to take you from pretty much complete beginner with ChatGPT to almost master level prompt creator. And so I'm gonna leave this up for, for the most part, but um, I wanted to leave it open for some Q&A because since I can't have a computer in front of me and show you guys how to do this, I wanna talk to you guys and give you a live example. We're gonna start over here right in the back. All right, good question. He said, where do I see ChatGPT versus Google's AI? So for anyone that doesn't know, Google has a ChatGPT pretty much alternative called Bard. And so right now, Bard isn't as compatible, and not compatible,